In this video, we're gonna take a look at these two fantastic bottles of Ardbeg from the 1970s. So here we have it, two fantastic bottles of Ardbeg bottled in the 1970s. Now, we're not gonna to go too much into the history of Ardbeg in this video, because if you want, we've just written a really long, very extensive history of the Ardbeg distillery and published it on our blog, which I'll link to in the description below. And we've also got a very useful timeline because there's so many openings and closures and problems and fires at Ardbeg that it is much easier to read it in a written format. So in today's video, we are taking a look at these super bottles. The first one here is an Ardbeg 10 year old bottled from the late 1970s. And then the other one is the Ardbeg here. There's no age statement on it, but many of these other ones carry a small label up here saying that they're a 10 year old. Uh, and this one's from the early 1970s. So first of all, let's take a look at the bottles themselves. Without wanting to state too much of the obvious, Clearly this one's in a clear glass bottle and this one's in a green glass bottle, but they've both also got long screw cap uh, closures, which is common on these bottles or most bottles of single malt whiskey from the 1960s all the way through until around the, uh, the 2000s really. Uh, they both are bottled in uh, UGB or United Glass Bottling Manufacturers SC295 bottles. Uh, they've both got the same SC295 bottle code underneath it. And that bottle code really does, it, it gives you a ballpark indication and it's one of the factors that you use to help authenticate and check the age of bottles, but it's no by no means definitive. But it, you know, the SC295 UGB code was in use throughout the 1970s, which ties these in perfectly. So let's take a look at the labels next. Clearly this one is the black and gold uh, label that many of you, if you follow Ardbeg, will recognise because it's on bottles from the 1970s, 1980s, and all the way into the 1990s really. There's a lot of 10 year olds bottled in this way, and there's also a very rare 25, and also a slightly less rare 30 year old bottled in this way as well. Now, this is a label that I absolutely love. It's it's a gorgeous style and it's sort of, maybe because they used it so long, it feels timeless. It feels like this is the Ardbeg that we know. Now, this bottle from the earlier part of the 1970s looks quite a bit different really. The font, you know, if anyone's a fan of card and head dumpies, you know, it's a very sort of non ardbeggy in type there really. And clearly it's on a very long white label. If you compare the length of these two labels, it's quite fascinating that this, this sort of very long or elongated label wasn't in use in the early 1970s. And then this three quarter length you say is, is more common with what you would expect from other bottles. Now, when you look at features on the label, this late 1970s bottling, so, okay, then first of all, how do we know it's a late 1970s bottling? Well, one of the key giveaways is that it says 26 and two third fluid ounces and 75.7 centiliters. So that helps us date it to the end of the 1970s because of the 1st of January, 1980, all the bottle details had to be displayed in metric. It was a directive from our long lost friends in the EU. So in the end of the 1970s, you find a lot of companies displaying the volume of 26 and two third fluid ounces, or you know, in the metric, which that is, and also in the imperial, 75.7 centiliters. Because clearly, if they didn't sell these this stock of bottles by the 1st of January 1980, and you had, you know, you didn't have the 75.7 centiliters on there, you wouldn't be able to retail it. So this was a bit of a fail safe used by the manufacturers to mean that they could sell their bottles from like the late, 19, late 1970s and sell them in the 1980s if they had any residual stock. This one, with it being an early 1970s bottling, just says 26 and two third fluid ounces. Also, it's, they're both bottled in degrees proof. Now, this is the old metric way of saying ABV. And anyone watching in the US, note that this is from the UK measurement of degrees proof. So this one is actually bottled at 70 degrees proof, which is around 40% ABV by today's standard. But this one's bottled at 80 degrees proof, which is around 45, 45.6% ABV by today's standards. 
clearly both of these bottles are very rare. Bottles of single malt whiskey, you know, single malt whiskey as a category really didn't pick up in sort of like the UK until sort of like the early 1990s. And in the 1980s, it was still very much in its infancy. So these bottles coming from the 1970s is incredibly rare. And to find one like this, which is unopened, so late 1970s, probably circa 78, 79, is a real, real collector thing. You know, this has been in class for so long and it's a beautiful bottle. The level's not into the neck, but again, it's it's a late 70s bottle and you will forgive it that much. And clearly it's under a parafilm wrapper at the moment. Now, this bottle clearly is open and has been consumed and enjoyed. Uh, we sent a dram of this to Kinder down at the Whiskey Exchange, has had a dram of this uh, and found it uh, very palatable. Uh, we're sending a dram of this over to Angus at Whiskey Fun, so you might see some revised notes on this bottle coming up on Whiskey Fun in the near future. But this one being open clearly means that we can't sell it, so we're drinking it. And you know what? If, if you can plead your case in the comments as to why you deserve a dram of this, plead away and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to fulfill as many as we feel necessary. Now this bottle, it's closed and it's available uh, to buy now on our shop. It's you know worldwide uh, delivery on this bottle and we've got it priced at around three and a half thousand pounds. So it's a really rare addition to any collection of Ardbeg. So there we have it, two fantastic 1970s bottlings of Ardbeg. One for sale at the minute for around three and a half thousand pounds and the other one available to your uh, pleasure if you can convince me enough in the comments. And like I say, on our blog at the minute, uh, we've got some really in-depth guides, not just about Ardbeg, but about lots of other distilleries. We just featured two very long uh, uh, histories of the Brewer and Klein Leash distilleries or distillery. Uh, so please go and check those out. And we've got lots more Ardbeg content coming in the next few weeks, so be sure to subscribe to this channel.